all the data suggests that when you do a clinical trial and you give kids or uh, overweight adults um, uh, either two cans of, of fizzy drinks with sugar or two cans of the diet equivalent, uh, and you do that for six months or, or so, you do not see any difference in weight or uh, diabetes risk or any other metabolic parameters. So there's no clear benefit from swapping from someone from a sugar drink to uh, a, a diet drink, except uh, maybe for, if you, for your dentist. Okay, so the dentists like it because definitely it, it, it's uh, good for your teeth. Um, and so that, just that fact alone, think about it. In each, you know, the average can will have maybe 150 calories. So people have two a day at least. It's 300 calories less. Why are these, why are these kids and these adults not losing some weight? Not, it wouldn't be massive, but, you know, we're told that that would be about 15% of our um, intakes, right? So yeah. if you believe the calories in, calories out, actually, they should lose weight. They don't. So clearly, in my view, something else is happening uh, metabolically to these to these individuals. Either their brain is being reset by the sweetness chemicals, so it's at a neural level, or uh, something is happening metabolically, and you are getting some change in insulin in ways we still don't understand. And I've put myself with monitors and giving myself sucralose, and I can see. Uh, I, I do get a sugar peak, uh, and my insulin peak, strangely, with wow. the sweetness, which I can't explain. Or more likely, it's affecting our gut microbes. And so they don't know how to deal with these chemicals, which are all derived from things like petrol and um, uh, paraffin, uh, very ultra things that we're never supposed to eat. And so they, they produce weird chemicals in response and those chemicals then have a reaction on our body, which um, interferes with the metabolism and in a way either makes us put on some weight or, or predisposes to diabetes in the same way as the sugar. So uh, we don't know the mechanisms yet. There may be differences between them. They definitely work in different ways. And some people might be okay with some and not with others because you know I admit everyone is, is unique. But I think the whole idea of reducing sugar by just adding uh, unlimited amounts of these chemicals which is you know one side effect of the the sugar levy yeah um has to be thought through and we should be weaning people off ultra sweetened products which make them more likely particularly kids to to seek sugar and avoid sour things which may be good for them uh, and that's my major worry so um you know, I'm looking forward to seeing whether stevia, for example, which would appear to be the more natural of these ones, does have any particular benefits. But I suspect that this whole sweetness thing, by artificially creating these these sort of flavors that people crave, um, is going to have some other knock-on effects down the line that we don't know about. So we should be treat, teaching kids and, and you know adults how to go back to enjoying things that uh like water or like teas and um uh it, herbal teas and things that have a bit of interest in it rather than this this blunderbuss massive amounts of sugar yeah. uh, whether it's fake or real it's amazing you know my kids are sort of 10 and 7 at the moment and it's amazing how many of their friends don't drink water they're allergic <laughs> <laughs> no you know what it's kind of it, it's 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 really sad actually on, mm. on a on a on a deep level because I think if you think about it in in terms of our evolutionary heritage, we could never have survived if we didn't drink water, right? You know, <laughs> five hundred years ago, I don't think we had the choice to not drink water, whereas now we have that choice, and I suspect it's because it's been conditioned out of them uh, via society, by averse and choices that they've been given. Um, because I just fundamentally cannot believe that a human being cannot drink water. But I, but just to be super compassionate to parents who are listening who might struggle with their own children, I get it. I get it can be tough, but actually, it's very unnatural to not to not drink water. No, uh, totally agree. But I think it's as you said, part of conditioning. And uh, you know, I go into the water business in the book in a fair way, and 
you know, we've been conditioned that tap water is perhaps bad for us and uh, it tastes bad or um, has metallic things in it or there have been, you know, history of you go abroad and ever say, well, don't, don't drink the water. You know, what are you going to... It could be deadly. Uh, and that, that fueled this whole rise in um, mineral waters and uh, this con that basically, you know, Pepsi and, and Coca-Cola and Nestle take tap water and they, they just stick it through uh, a processing plant and um, re-bottle it, uh, minus any taste, and uh, do that. But... Uh, and then, then have to add some uh, flavorings to it, as they they were doing with um, for kids to add a twist of fake lime or uh, <laughs> orange to make it palatable. Yeah. Uh, no, absolutely. I think we really important. We get kids taste back, re reset the thermostat away from this super sweetness that uh, is the problem because they but, but they can't then appreciate other foods because in a way. Everything's set so high yeah. uh, that they need it. No. I, I love that phrase, reset the thermostat. That's exactly what it is, really. Um, I think, I can't remember how I put it in my in my very first book. Uh, the I wrote about, you know, if a child, you know, 100 years ago, you know, the taste of a ripe peach on a, sum, you know, a nice, in the peak of summer, that would be like a treat. It would be, man, this is so gorgeous and sweet. Whereas I think if you're used to having things like Haribo's or, um, you know, every day, and that becomes your definition or your normal sweetness as a packet of sweets, then of course a peach no longer holds the magical of your that it used to. Yeah. And, and I think it's just been this steady downgrading of our taste buds. When did you have a last have a grape that was slightly tangy? You know, yeah. when I was a kid, they were always a bit sour and uh you know there was the odd sweet one but you you, you like that sweet sour sort of mix but they've virtually disappeared now they're all bred for super sweetness yeah and so you just can't get uh you don't we're losing that range yeah. of, of taste because and i think a lot of this is because of sugar and artificial sweeteners and the fact that um it is uh, kids are brought up you know through this uh this mechanism and and, and that has a knock-on effect on the ability then to taste you know, to have bitter vegetables and uh, and all these other things. If you enjoyed that clip, here's another powerful clip that I think you are really going to enjoy. Just one dose of caffeine in the evening decreased the amount of deep sleep by 20%. You would have to normally age by about 15 years to produce that type of a deficit in your deep sleep. Or you can do it every single night by having a cup of coffee.